Hi guys, welcome. Today we will take a look at PWM which is the pulse width modulation. In NRF52832 and NRF52840 this is really important module and we can use the PWM in NRF devices for many different purposes like controlling the motors or some other stuff. So we will see that later on. So right now let's see what is the PWM. So basically the PWM is the pulse width modulation and it's a technique of generating digital pulses on an output pin. So the PWM is basically a digital communication and uh, it uses logic 1 and logic 0 as you can see here. So with the help of uh, PWM we can, uh, use, we can change the average value of output voltage and uh, we can also change the levels of the controlling signals by just changing the duty cycle. Let's consider this is a one second time and we are generating these pulses and uh, if we give logic 1 and then 0 for a little longer and then logic 1 so the overall turn on period is 25% in this case so that would be the duty cycle if uh, the turn on period is more it's going to be like this and if the turn on period is more higher then of course it's the duty cycle is going to increase so the number of pulses generated in one second is the frequency of the PWM and the duration for which the signal stays in the high state is the duty cycle of the signal and is described in terms of per percentage so here you can see this is 25% 50% and 75% and 100% uh, uh, would be equal to logic 1 because uh, there would be no zero logic so let's see what is the duty cycle and how do we output this so uh, I got uh, some examples here for example if you are using this NRF device with 3.3 .3 volts uh, normally don't don't use the 5 volts with NRF devices always uh, try to use 3 volt logic so here you can see if uh, we turn off the output is going to be logic 0 which is the 0 volt and it's going to be a straight line if once we give it a logic 1 and uh, it, it goes like this and it's a straight line so what happen in what happens in the PWM is we give it a logic 1 and then for some specific delay we, do, we give it logic 0 and then logic 1 again so in this case if we increase the time of uh, the voltage being turned on the duty cycle is going to increase and if we decrease the time the duty cycle is going to decrease so the more the duty cycle is it means the average output value is more so you can see here or uh, in this example if I'm just giving it as a 0% duty cycle it's equal to 0 volt if I'm giving it 25% duty cycle it's around about equal to 1 or 1.1 or something like that voltage and if I'm giving it 50% uh, 50 duty cycle it's going to be 2.5 or around about that and uh, if I'm increasing the duty cycle it's going up and up and it depends on the output voltage this example is for 5 volt but normally we are using 3.3 volt so this 5 volt example is not for NRF devices it's considered this use case for our purposes as well so here in this case 3.3 volts uh, are going to be the main voltage instead of 5. You can see that we can increase the duty cycle and decrease the duty cycle and uh, it's really useful and uh, by increasing the and decreasing the duty cycle we can change the output average value of the voltage and uh, thus we can change uh, the brightness of LEDs or we can use these uh, PWM signals to drive motors and uh, we can also use them in the power switching applications. A simple example of this duty cycle would be like if I'm t if I'm giving the duty cycle as zero, that is I'm not giving any pulses, it's going to turn off the LED. But what if I give it the duty cycle of 50%? Like I'm turning on and off uh, for the 50% time, I'm turning voltage off and uh, for 50% of the time I'm turning it on. So it's going to uh, turn on the LED but it's not going to be too bright because the voltage, average voltage is not too high. So when we increase the duty cycle, so the average voltage is increasing and in this case we can see the LED's brightness is increasing and uh, if we turn it to a full 100% duty cycle then we can see the LED will glow with its full brightness. Okay, so the PWM features for NRF52832 and NRF52840 are described in this slide and uh, 
here you can see that uh, they have uh, the programmable P PWM frequency so we can program this frequency basically what uh, it's saying is we can program this frequency like it's giving 5 pulses in a second or it's giving 500 pulses in a second we can define this in the PWM module of course uh, we can uh, change uh, the PWM to edge aligned and centered aligned and we will see that later on and uh, multiple duty cycle arrays uh, we can give some values and it will automatically play like uh, we play a song and everything works in autonomous way and uh, because uh, the DMA is involved and no CPU is being used in this process so it's really good in terms of uh, performance we can also change the polarity of uh, output and uh, and also the duty cycle and the base frequency for the period the base frequency for this so for example we can tell like for how long it's going to turn on so we can change that as well all these sequences can be placed in the RAM and we can to use the DMA to transfer these sequences from RAM to the peripheral and it's going to use that and we are not using any processor in this time let's see the architecture of the PWM in NRF52832 uh, we have uh, three PWM instances so basically we can use uh, we have three PWM modules in NRF52832 whereas in NRF52840 we have four PWM modules so uh, for each uh, PWM module we have uh, four channels and uh, four channels can be assigned to four different output pins and uh, in total we can control 12 pins for the PWM in NRF52832 whereas uh, in the case of NRF52840 we can control 16 uh, output pins uh, with the PWM signals here you can see some internal architecture so uh, and uh, what I discussed in the previous slide uh, is uh, here like we have a uh, sequence 1 and 2 for example these are different values for the duty cycle and uh, these sequences are transmitted to the decoder and decoder puts them in the compare compare and uh, we can and then compare after uh, go, going to that specific value generates uh, a logic signal and it all depends on this these values so we have four compares here so four compare channels here so we can use these channels and uh, we can put the values and uh, they can give different outputs but their base frequency is going to remain the same because uh, they are all being fed through a same frequency channel and uh, in case of NRF52840 it's similar as we have discussed earlier we have uh, four compared channels in each PWM so in case of uh, NRF52832 we have three PWMs and uh, in each PWM we have four channels which uh, compare zero to compare three and uh, we can use these channels and uh, we can give uh, output uh, in different terms and we will see we have to use different modes uh, of loading the data and uh, loading these uh, comparison values and we will see that uh, in the next slide each instance of the PWM has four channels and each channel can be connected to an output pin and each PWM instance has a programmable frequency here we have a simple example for generating sequences and here you can see that we can use uh, these sequences values these uh, values are loaded in the compare buffers and uh, then they are used however uh, you can see we can generate uh, special sequences of the waves and uh, we can use these sequences for different purposes so the modes of working there are four modes in the PWM and uh, the module can be configured in the four ways and uh, each uh, mode of configuration has its own application and use cases so uh, we don't need to use all the modes at the same time so common mode uh, we have four modes uh, one uh, the first one is common other is grouped individual and waveform we will see these uh, in the later tutorials uh, in today's tutorial I'm just going to explain what is a PWM and what are the modes and what's the internal architecture of this in the later tutorial we will see how we can uh, configure and program them uh, the simple the common most commonly used applications for the PWM or of course the motor control we can use PWM to control different type of motors like servos and uh, BLDC and the stepper motors as well we will see of course we use them in switching power supplies battery charging and uh, 
uh, in, in LED dimming we will see these examples when we will use these modes we will use the different modes and of course we can use the PWM to convert the digital to analog signals uh, basically the PWM generates the average value so uh, it's similar to uh, the function of the AC is similar to the AC so and so PWM can also be used in this way as well and we also we have uh, the wave generations like if you want to generate uh, different types of output waves uh, you can use the PWM as well that's it for the basic introduction and in the next tutorial we will see how we can use the PWM and how we can program it. I hope so you have understood some stuff about the PWM. If you are new to my channel, please be sure to subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much and see you in the next video.